All right, my name is Lee Smith. I'm head instructor of Blood and Iron Martial Arts, and this is my Long Point South review. I'm going to break this down to several points so you guys know what I'm talking about and what, what went on at the event. Um, before I start, i got to praise Carl Bully and Dana Rowden for their excellent organization. They're HEMA's uh, East Coast power couple right now. They both are very forward thinking, very hard working, and absolutely excellent uh, members of our community. All right, so first point, event concept. Um, this was a brainchild of Dana Rowden, um, absolutely forward thinking member of our community. She, it was her idea to team up with the IMAF and host this at Disney World. A little bit skeptical I was at first, but you know I warmed up the idea, decided to register, and absolutely was pleasantly surprised. Seeing, um, seeing the ESPN footage of this first fight, absolutely excellent. And I think it's a really big step for Hema. So for conceptually, like she really pulled this off and I don't think there's anyone out there who could have done a better job. So event organization, Dana and her team did a fantastic job. I was exceptionally impressed. This is probably the best organized event I've been to that I was not involved at all in the organization myself. So I had zero, zero complaints. She went out of her way to make sure Sean could coach me and I could coach Sean. Um, she was incredibly helpful to most of the people there. She was constantly moving and working. You could see her, she's pretty stressed, but in the end, she really pulled it off, and I mean in a big way. So congrats to her for hosting and organizing such a good event. Her team was, per, was, was solid, literally solid. If I had a question, it was answered, and if they couldn't answer it, they had someone who could. That's all I can ask for as a competitor. However, finals organization. Um, Dana and her team did an excellent job during the finals, getting the mats up in absolutely record time. I don't even know how she did it, but it was excellent. However, the finals organization on behalf of like the IMAF, not so good. It was a little brutal. We were in our gear for, Jake and I were in our gear for probably two, three hours. Um, we were expected to be there like really early. I think it was 6 or 6.30 was our call time. It extended up to 7.30 and we fought around 10. So in future, I'd like to see that step down a bit, maybe get there at 8.30 if we're gonna fight at 10, that way we can do our warm up and we aren't bogged down tired by the time we actually get to fight. ESPN Wide World of Sports, around the Disney World area. It's a pretty good location, honestly. Um, the fighting spaces were large, open, uh, really, really nice, uh, well lit. I was very impressed. Um, food was expensive, but it's Disney pricing. Uh, it's to be expected, so if you're gonna go to this event, Make sure to bring a little extra cash to buy for Disney pricing. Um, I really like the location. Can't speak more highly of it. Parking was free, which is nice because we had a rental car. Um, it is far away from the airport, but most places have shuttles and stuff that go there. So if you get a shuttle, shuttle to the hotel where you're at, we were at the Radisson, you know, it's not so bad. Uh, as for the um, climate in Florida, well, I did not find it very agreeable whatsoever. It was probably the only downside to this event location. Muggy, kind of gross. Some people really like it. It wasn't for me. This was really well seated and organized. I had a great time. I had four fights instead of the standard three, which is quite a bonus. I had an excellent match in my pools with um, Jason Behrens. In the Alims, the Alims were very challenging. I had a really nice match with Aaron Schober, who always gives me difficulty when I fight him. The first time I fought Jeremy Steflik, it was also very good. And of course, Ben Floyd was probably my best match of the entire tournament, including the finals. It was extremely challenging, uh, gave me a lot, a lot, of, a lot of trouble, um, gave me some really nice new uh, bruises and uh, provided me with a very intense matchup. We both wanted to be on the finals and so it was kind of like two people fighting for rookie season, trying to get on the pros. Well, we definitely put on a show. Jake also noted it might have been the most intense match he's seen. All right, so this is from my experience fighting under these rule sets. Overall, the rules were good, but they weren't amazing. Uh, would I fight under them again? Yes. Would I encourage my students to do so? Yes. So that's definitely an improvement over 2014. Um, I do believe the control points need to be more clearly defined, especially when explaining to the judges and staff. Um, certain, like a lot of strikes I've seen from not only myself, but from other people by watching matches or in the, being in the coach's corner, those control points weren't, were not called, even though under the rule set they were clearly a control point. So moving forward, I'd like to see those more clearly defined in the rules. Otherwise, I, I like the concept, so that's definitely something. 
Uh, as well, I would like to see pot like pommel strikes being worth two points, while strikes with the strong of the blade being worth zero. I find that kind of odd, and I find that a definite hole in the rule set. If that could be tightened up, I think that also would, be, would make the rules a lot better to fight under. Another thing I noticed is with the, um, the afterblow is a little overpowered, with the afterblow taking everything down by one point, it's good. However, head strikes and torso strikes are worth two, so when people decide that they can't defend a strike, they'll simply absorb a blow and then hit you back with the, with the afterblow, which you are, it's impossible to defend. With that said, if they move the, the point differential from three and three, and then a decrease of one, so an, a strike to torso or head with afterblow would be a value of two, I think then, that, then they would have a real winning rule set. But that's just my opinion. I don't expect it to change, and I still would fight under the rule set even the way it is now. Officiating at the Longsword Tournament. This was probably the weakest point of all. Um, I, I, officiating is like still in its infant stages in HEMA. We still need training programs and stuff like that. We work on it in our, in our own school, but some schools work on it and some schools don't. And so who's willing to volunteer and step up? You don't know who you're going to get. So I'm really thankful for most of the judges, regardless of the quality, because they have a hard job. We all do it, the officials, directors, and I mean, Mike, you're not going to get things perfect all the time, and that's, that's expected. However, the one thing I did notice about this rule set that did bother me a little bit was the lack of the uh, understanding of how to, what a control point was. So if I was to cut to a control point, which is clearly defined under the rules, no one would call it. If I seen thrust after thrust with control missed, um, and that was a failure of the judges and the director's understanding of the rules. Um, with that said, there were some absolutely standout judges and directors while I was there, and like Jake Norwood did a fantastic job directing, probably the best director in the event. Um, another great director, Keith Cotter Riley, he's always solid. Like, yeah, I'd have no problem fighting when, he, when he's in the pit at any given time. The guy's just excellent. And, and Ben Strickling, who I'm a big fan of, the guy's not only a great fighter, really knows his stuff, always an excellent director. As for judges, the three judges that really stood out to me this weekend, Travis Mayotte, absolutely fantastic, sharp eyes. Miles Cup, Miles Cup is one of my um, one of my head judges out here in the West, and I mean I trust his eyes. He's got great eyes. He makes a good director, good judge, good official all around. And Patrick O'Neill um, was also really really good as well, and um, he had some sharp eyes and really smart perspective and quick on calling the points without looking at anyone else. So. Those officials really stood out, and I'm thankful they were there watching the fights and calling the points. All right, so first of all, before I do anything, a big thanks to RJ McKeon um, of South Coast Swords. I went to his house and practiced my cutting before the tournament. I cut like 30 mats, and uh, I mean, his coaching was outstanding, so I could not have placed as well as I did without his help. Uh, Miles and I together were training partners for that, and I mean, it was a lot of fun, but the kite tournament was serious business. Um, overall, it was a fantastic kite tournament. It's probably what I consider for my highlight of the event. Um, even going through it injured and hurt, <laughs> it was still an absolute lot of fun. Uh, it was well organized, and Carl Bala did a great job. Absolutely fantastic. Carl it, it has really sharp eyes. I mean, he's probably, in my opinion right now, the best cutter in North America. The guy's fast. I mean, his angles are really good. And he tends to win everything, right? Credit where credit's due. He's also an absolutely fantastic guy. He's very passionate about his craft. And that made cutting in this tournament, like, very, very enjoyable. I could, tr I could trust that his, um, his judgment would be good and sound throughout all the cuts. He knew what he was looking at. And his level of precision that few other judges have. I couldn't have run the tournament better myself. And I was very impressed with his work on that. So this was probably the most difficult cutting tournament I've participated in. Um, there were a lot of big name cutters there, guys like Tristan Zukowski, um, definitely like Sean, my teammate Sean Franklin, Jake Norwood, uh, Aaron Schober was absolutely amazing. Um, ben, ben Floyd also cut extremely well. Uh, there were lots of really good names in this tournament and a really serious level of difficulty. Um, so I was definitely pressed to do as well as I did. I was definitely happy with fourth, standing on the stage with, with Jake, with Sean, and with Aaron. Absolute honor. But when I say that this is probably easily the hardest tournament I've been in for cutting, it was extremely stressful, but in a good way. It definitely made me better, and I would, would never hesitate to do it again. Fantastic. 
So this followed the Long Point 2016 events pretty much to the letter. Um, so Carl wasn't allowed a lot of creativity in this um, in this kind of tournament, which is unfortunate because I think he has a lot of great ideas. And I look forward to seeing what he comes up with next year because I think he will probably go forward and come up with some of his own events outside of the standard Long Point 2016 rules. Um, I really enjoyed the events up into the feats. I thought they were fantastic. I enjoyed the simple cutting patterns. It was really good and it really measured clean, decisive cutting, which I appreciate. Um, the event, the feats themselves, we all had a problem with the moving target feet. I think Jake got his foot run over by the stand and I'm pretty sure either the stand tripped me, I haven't got, I haven't got a chance to review video, or my foot got stuck in the mat. Anyway, the, 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 the moving cutting feet across mats didn't work so well. So that was really the only complaint I had that. Other than that, the, um, the events were fun, excellently run. So my overall experience and for this event and my rating for it, definitely a B plus. Fantastic, fantastic organization by Dane Air team. Like, I can't speak more highly of that. Carl did a fat, great job in the cutting tournament. I'm looking forward to cutting under another one of his tournaments, especially one where he has a lot more creativity and say. I'm looking forward to seeing what he'll come up with because, well, he's a very intelligent guy and he's really good at his, at his craft. Um, fighting was strong. I really enjoyed that. Um, just a few problems with the officiating in one of the cutting events. Really, when you look at it from the scope of an entire event, it's very minor. So, and considering the Dana's level of perfectionism, I would trust that the event will be even better next year. And I'll definitely, if, if money permits it, I'll definitely be registered. So, what I'd like to see in a future event for Long Point South 2017, I'd like to see, first of all, I'd like to see more events. Right this year, we only had the, the Open Steel Longsword and the Cutting Tournament. Next year, I'd like to see more diversity of events, so maybe a Sword and Buckler Tournament. Um, I'd really like to see a women's event. Nicole would love to come out and fight that, and so would a lot of our other women here. Um, I'd love to see maybe even a rapier event. Highly doubt it, but you know, something to throw out there. A sport, especially a saber event. A saber event would also be fantastic. I'd like to have a bit more opportunities to fight and more events to fight in. So other than that, the event was really successful. I look forward to seeing what they come up with in 2017. Hopefully, hopefully if everything works out, I'll be there. Thank you for watching.